the king of serpents, unblinking, hypnotic, deadly. The king cobra, the largest venomous snake in the world, is powerful enough to kill a full-grown elephant. It can live up to 30 years of age and never stops growing. To accommodate this endless growth, the king must shed its skin four to six times a year. The first sign, its eyes become cloudy. From a milky secretion released to help separate old skin from new. When its eyes clear, it begins shedding. It can take up to 10 days to scrape the used flakes of itchy, irritable skin free. It's an anxious time in the life of a snake. Like all males this time of year, this snake seems to have only one thing on his mind, sex. But our tagged female has already mated and wants only to be left in peace. Unfortunately, she is about to play out a horrifying scene. She is not fully immune to her own kind's venom. And he squeezes her in his vice-like jaws, pumping venom into her bloodstream. Come on, I've got him by the tail. Pull. Whoa, 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 stop, stop! Catching big, venomous snakes can literally be a matter of life and death. Snake, snake, snake! I need the snake tongs! But what if there's a way to catch the animal without entering the danger zone? From a I safe distance. Whoa, whoa. Could a robot catch a snake? To find out, snake expert Brady Barr will tangle with deadly serpents and check out state-of-the-art robots to develop his own snake bot and test it in a dangerous encounter of the slithery kind. You got this snake. In Brady Barr's line of work, he earns his hazard pay. Giant constrictors have wrestled him. He's got my leg. I travel all bitten him watch, watch, watch. Ah! more than once. Ah! Ah! Oh, my oh my gosh, that's a king cobra. Careful, careful. And he's had many run-ins oh with toxic oh, species. Talking about it. Oh, oh. No, no, no. All too often, finding snakes means worming your way into some kind of claustrophobic crevice. Snake! Snake! Oh! Wait, wait, wait! But I've got an idea that might make my job a lot less stressful. Could Brady use a robot to take over the potentially deadly job of wrangling snakes? His snake bot will have to operate in dark and confined places. It'll need a camera, and he wants to control it from a distance. Brady starts his search for a snake-catching robot down a manhole. I'm in downtown Washington, D.C., getting ready to go subterranean. That's right, I'm headed into the sewers. All right, I'm going down. The Water Authority relies on robots to monitor over 3,000 kilometers of sewer and underground tunnels. Could a sewer robot work as a snake bot? Right. <laughs> Man, it's good to be in the sewer. All right, lead the way, my friend. Okay. You ever come across anything unusual down here? Anybody ever come across anybody living down here? No, we or animals? We haven't come across any anybody living down here. We do come across animals down here. I think uh, the one the one that I can remember is a cow. We saw a cow, a cow? inside the sewer. It Good was, gosh. It wasn't living, but yeah, well, yeah, I was gonna say I wouldn't want to get my milk from that cow. <laughs> sewer milk.
system. Woo! Yeah, man, it's slippery over here. Yeah, yeah, Sewer yeah. systems can be dangerous. Man, you don't want to make a misstep here. Uh, Running with rivers and waterfalls God. containing human that waste. Slippery. Now I notice you got some high-tech gear on. This is a poisonous gas detector. Yes, sir. This here, this here will measure if, if and as uh -oh. you can see, it's going off. That's not good. We're getting a little bit of an alarm here. The fumes can push out breathable air, so they have to monitor oxygen levels. So long story short, this is a dangerous place down here. Absolutely. And that's why the DC Water Authority uses robots to do their dirty work. I hope this is your guy up ahead. Yes, it is. Not some unsavory character down here. <laughs> hey, man, I'm Brady. Hey, Brady, I'm Bruno. Hey, man, oh, that is awesome. Check that out. So this is the sewer bot. <laughs> yeah, this is the sewer bot, aka the rover. So this is what you send down in the sewer to places that you can't go or places that are too dangerous for you to go. Exactly, it's our eye in the sewer. That's exactly what it is. But will it work as Brady's snake tracking robot? See, we got a camera on the front of it that pans and tilts so we can look at different angles in the sewer line, check if a crack. A camera will obviously be vital. Seems heavy. Can I pick it up? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, that is something. Can this thing go under Like the sewers, the holes where snakes are found will be pitch black. And I see you got some really bright lights up in the front. LEDs are in the front. So we're in a big pipe now, but the plan is to take the rover and send it down a small pipe, a place we can't go. Okay, let's go. Let's it's time it. to put the rover to work and see just what it's capable of. Hey, hey, hey. No. Tell him what he All right, rover. Do your stuff. Go. go, baby. There it goes. All right. Look at it. Man, it's going fast. An extra long tether means they can monitor the video feed from the comfort of a van safely oh, above yeah. ground. Call me a sewer rat. That's awesome, man. I like it down there. I can't wait to see the video. Oh, there it is. Look at it. So that's the, the view from the rover. Look at it. There it goes. So it's going down that pipe looking for problems, cracks, animals. Anything wrong with the infrastructure of the sewer? Now, what's this white thing, white stuff coming up? That's uh, grease. Grease? That's grease in the sewer lines. We have grease. a lot of grease. Grease builds up. Where's it coming from? Out of people's houses, out of laterals, anything, that, any cooking food, it just builds up. The sewer robot has the camera and bright lights Brady needs. But in other ways, it's not the perfect snake bot. There aren't many places I go where I'm going to be able to take a big van, a water and sewer authority van with lab technicians to monitor the video. That's just not going to happen. Also, I think that the weight of the rover is just too great. It would bog down in the sand uh, of these aardvark burrows where these snakes are found. I've learned a lot today. This has been good stuff. There's a very different robot that might be just what Brady needs. The Armadillo. Small, lightweight, highly mobile. It's designed for military surveillance. Cameras on all four sides feed video to a screen on the controller. A soldier can safely survey an enemy bunker. It should allow Brady to explore a snake burrow. And its high-tech tires are designed to handle the sandy soil. Next stop, South Africa and giant snakes. Brady's headed to the Kualata Game Ranch, a couple hours north of Johannesburg. The area is riddled with burrows, perfect refuges for big snakes. I hope that the robot will be able to go down these burrows, look around, be my eyes for me, let me know what's in the burrow, let me know if it's safe for me to continue down uh, and get what I'm after. And I'm after big snakes, pythons. In particular, African pythons. They're one of the biggest snake species in the world. Yet they're almost impossible to find. The best place to look is in their burrows. You never know what's going to be inside. Venomous snakes, cobras, puff adders, hyenas, aardvarks, warthogs. 
If you go down there, you can be rewarded with a giant snake, but you'd also lose your life without knowing what's in those holes before you venture in. So Brady hopes the armadillo can take over as his snake bot, exploring the burrows to locate a python. But that's the easy part. Can the robot then drive the snake out so Brady doesn't have to go in after it? The test starts at night. It's winter time in South Africa, where the days can be chilly, but the nights are just downright cold. Way too cold for a giant snake. The snakes may come out and bask in the sun in the day, but at night, they've got to be underground. They've got to be down in the burrows. So I'm thinking that's the best time to find them. Let's send the armadillo down these burrows where the snakes are trying to stay warm. This looks like a good hole. Great. But there's no one home. This looks like a good one. Oh, check it out. That is a snake skin. These look like huge belly scales. That's gotta be a python. No snake in Africa gets that big. The robot has found a clue, while Brady remains safe above ground. Where there's a snake skin, there has been a snake. He may still be at home. You can see the burrow continues over here on the right. I'm gonna continue. We're gonna run right over this baby and go find the snake that it came from. Here, the soil changes. You can see where the walls have kind of been broken down or decayed. You can see little crevices, lots of roots. It's a good burrow. Watch it. Snake, snake, snake. We got a snake. We got a snake. The robot has found a snake, we got a snake. but it's not a, a python. Oh, he's moving. That's a puff adder. That's a venomous snake. Oh, that is awesome. That is a monster, too. That is a puff adder. Very, very dangerous snake. If I'm not mistaken, more venomous snake bites are attributed to this species than any other venomous snake in Africa. They inject large amounts of highly potent venom that acts by destroying cells. Puff adders also have a special kind of stealth camouflage. Each scale has a ridge that makes them less reflective. They don't glint like most snakes and are harder to spot. I am not going in that burrow. We're pulling our robot out and we're gonna go to the next burrow. Man, chalk one up to the robot. He could have just saved my life. Brady tries several more burrows, but no luck. He resumes the hunt next morning. Nobody home. We know this is an empty burrow. Let's move to the next one. So far, it's been a bust. I had high hopes for that burrow. Let's move on. Brady decides to try one more hole. It's a chamber. This one's not that deep at all. It just... Whoa, 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 whoa. We have something there, something. It's a snake. Definitely a snake, and it's a python. That is definitely a python. Yes, the robot found it. Now we gotta try to get it out of there. Brady wants to investigate this magnificent and rare animal up close. Can the robot help him to extract it? Before coming to South Africa, Brady came yes. up with a way it robot might just do that. Let's get the animal head on it. Brady's plan is to trick the python and lure it out of its burrow. He was inspired by the growing field of biomimetics using robots to imitate wild animals. 
like the researchers who used a robotic female grouse to hoodwink males and stimulate mating displays. An onboard camera records the extraordinary courtship dances the robot provokes. If robots can dupe grouse, can they fool pythons? Brady recruits expert taxidermist Paul Reimer to disguise his robot as a wild animal that a python could encounter. A jackal. Now, my fake jackal comes into play. I'm gonna bolt this baby onto the top of the armadillo. If the disguise and works, the python could see bolt. the jackal as a threat, slither out of the burrow, and Brady can grab it. Or it's gonna view the jackal as a prey item. It's gonna strike it, put on the big squeeze, thinking that it's a real animal, and while it's squeezing it, I'm gonna pull out a ball of python, all coiled. Build around the armadillo and the jackal. All right, the jackal is in place, and we gotta just send it down the hole. a bad image, bad signal. Oh, it's, oh, yeah, oh, it's, it's turned, it's turned, it's turned. It's looking at the jackal. The jackal appears to intimidate the python. The coiled tail signals that it feels threatened and may be poised to strike. I'm gonna go forward just, I'm gonna creep a little. Oh, it struck the jackal, but it, it didn't get caught. I'm gonna back up just a little bit. It definitely struck, I got it. Man, it didn't, didn't wrap it up. It looked to me like more of a defensive strike. It wasn't a predatory strike. If it would have been a predatory, he would have held on and wrapped up the jackal. The snake seems tensely aware of the jackal, but it doesn't see it as a serious threat, and it doesn't seem to view it as prey. And now he's, he's in tight coils. His head's in the middle of the coils. All I see is coils. I mean, it's almost an impenetrable fortress. The robot worked in finding the snake but it's not gonna be able to get that snake out of that hole for me. I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pull the jackal out. It's going to be harder than Brady thought for a robot to actually wrangle a snake. His snake bot needs an upgrade, but how should he adapt it? To find out what a robot needs to tackle a python, Brady's going to try doing it himself. Which is not something I really wanna do with a giant snake. I mean, that snake is huge. A snake that size could kill a human very easily. <clears throat> I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna suck it up, I'm just gonna go down. But you guys have, you guys gotta pull me out if I yell. I mean, you've got to be standing by because this is a tight hole. <clears throat> That's what it's down to. I'm back to square one. Brady Bar's crawling down animal holes again, dangerous animal holes. My family is not gonna be happy about this. Dang. Brady's uh. snake tracking robot may have located a python, but he's going to have to go in and get it. Yeah, 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 I see his head, it's in the very back. <laughs> You know, the, the problem is the chamber's just not big enough to accommodate me and the snake. I don't know if I can do this. Hannes? Yes, but I... You stay close to my feet. Uh, but I've done. Okay. Fellow scientist Hannes yeah. Botha will have to pull him out if things go wrong. I can't see the head. It's hissing. Where's the damn head? I hear him hissing. He's looking at us. Where's the damn head? Hannes, yes, pull me out. Hang on just a second. Yeah, pull. Okay. Okay. I don't know if I can do it. Oh, oh, he's coming out over here. He's 
coming out! He's right on top of the camera! His head's right here. I'm gonna go in the other hole and try to grab him by the tail, and I'll pull him out by the tail. Simon, tell me if he moves. Yeah. Boom. What's going on? His back coils are moving. His head's coming back into the tunnel. Oh, yeah, I see his head. It's right by his tail. His head's right here. Hannes, get ready to pull me, but his head is right next to me. I'm going to see if I can tong him. Brady uses specialized snake grabbers to try to get hold of its head. He's too strong. So he heads back to the first entrance. Ugh. All right, I'm going to try to hook its tail. Simon, did anybody else see the head? Pull me back just a little bit. Pull me back slow. Oh, slow. Whoa, 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 whoa. I lost the tail. Pull me back. Slowly, slow. Oh, shoot. Give me the snake stick. Hurry, he's moving, hurry. And I'm so close. It's hissing. Let me go in a little bit. He reaches for the tail with his hand. Pull me back slowly. Slowly. I've got him by the tail. Pull. All right, hurry. Hurry. Get me out. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop, stop. All right, pull me. Pull me. I got him. Wait, 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 wait. Watch the head. Somebody help me grab. Honest, grab. Somebody grab the snake. I can't hang on. Watch it, watch it, watch it. Watch it. You got him? Keep pulling. All right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Everybody get back. He's coming out. Help me pull, Hannes. We got him! Man, that thing is a monster! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Watch out! Look at that! That has got to be five meters of python! Man! My heart is going a mile a minute. And these giant snakes are so rare. Every day, there are fewer and fewer of these snakes on the planet because people kill them just out of fear and ignorance. Man, it's always a good day when you catch a giant python. But it's even better day when you catch a giant python and you don't get bitten. Whew. Woo! The robot successfully tracked down a huge python. But to physically wrangle a snake, Brady's snake bot must be able to actually grab it, especially if it's venomous. One of the most terrifying snake-catching scenarios is when a deadly toxic serpent ends up close to humans. It has to be removed, or bad things can happen. Just ask the young farmer from a small town not far from Johannesburg. His day started normally enough. But he had no idea that a Mozambique spitting cobra had taken refuge in a broken plumbing pipe outside. It's one of the deadliest snakes in Africa. Its venom literally breaks down your flesh. It's quite comfortable in water. Following the pipe, it emerged through the U-bend of his toilet. And bit him in the last place a man wants to be bitten. Fortunately, he survived, his manhood more or less intact. That's why venomous snakes have to be kept away from people. But handling a deadly snake is like handling a bomb. 
one false move can be your last. Today, incredibly sophisticated robots are used to defuse bombs. Could something like this make an effective snake bot? To find out, Brady checks in with John Bilski of the Pennsylvania State Police Bomb Squad. I want to find out more about what these robots are capable of to see if I can actually use them to go in a house and remove an incredibly dangerous snake. I like this little guy in, in the back of the truck there. We'll bring him out for you. Oh, look at that. That is awesome. Which robot is this? This is the i robot. Look at that. That is incredible. It investigates several suspicious package calls each month. Like the sewer robot, it has a live feed camera on board. But it has something else that Brady's snake bot will need, a mobile arm and gripping claw. The claw enables it to access the back of the car and remove what could be a bomb. The i has one other function that Brady's hopefully not going to need. Brady's not planning to blow up any snakes, but the robot is obviously capable and could be the foundation of his snake bot. The bomb defusing robot suggested a design for my snake bot, a mobile base, a maneuverable arm with a gripper on the end. However, the robot I used to capture snakes is gonna have to be a whole lot faster and more dexterous. I'm hoping the guys here at HDT will have what I'm looking for. Brady's about to shake hands with one of the most sophisticated robotic arms on the planet. Hey, Tom, Brady Barr. Hi. Hey, pleasure. So this is it. This is it. Unbelievable, is all I can say. I mean, this is going to be the snake bot. And this is what we're going to utilize to try to keep me out of a very dangerous situation. Yes, this is the arm that's going to try to catch that snake. And, and this, this is the Mark I okay, manipulator. The Mark I manipulator. It emerged from a project to design a robotic arm that could be used as a prosthetic limb. Uh, it's designed to have a lot of dexterity, so it has basically all the same motions of a human arm. It's like the i uh, uh, bomb disposal robot, capacity. but adapted to the needs of a snake bot. It's incredible. I mean, it's intimidating in a way. I don't know why I say that, but to see that thing, I mean, a very fluid motion. Yes. It's not a jerky, robotic type of motion. Yes. So, I mean, look at that. Can I, can I give a grip yep, there? You sure can. And it won't crush my hand? Uh, it probably won't. Wow, that's firm. I mean, that's a firm grip. Wow, so it's not a joystick. I was envisioning a joystick, but, you know, so, what do you call this? Well, we call it a...